Good morning, NBA fans. Chris Terrell here with RotoPros.com to bring you my DFS NBA cheat sheet tutorial video. For anyone that knows me, I cover NHL, MLB, NFL, PGA, and NASCAR for RotoPros. Um, I do articles. I do cheat sheets for those. I haven't been as active in the NBA world just because of time restraints covering all those other sports. Um, but this season I have gone headfirst into the NBA. I've brought my cheat sheet back, which I had last year. I've added a ton of stats over the first few weeks of the season. So I want to do a video just going over those stats, which ones I use, how I break down the matchups each and every day to come up with my core plays that I list on the sheet and that go into my lineups. So with that, let's get started. So we're going to start on the matchups tab here. This is the first tab on the bottom of the sheet. This will show every game of the day. Um, so as you'll see here, Atlanta is in Detroit, Charlotte's in Washington, and so on and so on. Um, this is Friday, November 22nd's lineup, just if you're wondering here and you're, and you're uh, watching this video maybe at a later date. So it isn't current to um, when you're watching it. This is just the day that I decided to do it. So then beside each one, so in blue, um, in this column here, that is going to be your road team. Green is going to be your uh, home team. That is relevant when you're looking at the team records over here. You've got the overall record of each team, and then we've got the home and road record. Um, so I've highlighted in green the team that's at home today and the team in blue that's on road today, just so it's a little bit easier to pick that information out. And then to the left of these matchups, it's going to show back-to-back -back and three and four. So if a team's on a back-to-back, -back, that will be checked. Um, if it's a three and four, that team will be that team will be checked there as well. So as you can see um, tonight, Golden State is the only team on a on a third game in four nights, and no teams are on a back-to-back. -back. Beside that, we've got the Vegas info. We've got the spread um, as well as the over/under of that game and the projected points for each team. Talked about the records, we've got the streak here, so how each team's been doing, win, lose. So then we move over, we've got uh, each team's points per game scored, and we've got uh, points allowed per game, and that is for that team as well. So Atlanta has scored 107.6 points per game this season, they have allowed 116.9 points per game. Um, everything is color-coded throughout the sheet, so things that we're looking for... Um, to target are going to be in green, things that we're going to maybe look into fade, things that uh, stats that don't stand out uh, that aren't good stats are going to be in red. Um, just a little bit easier to pick that information out. So as you can see, points per game allowed by Detroit, that defense is not very good in terms of, if you look down here, say at Miami, Miami is scoring 112 points per game. They're only allowing 103. So that's, a, that's green. Uh, the leaders on this slate right now would be Utah's only allowing 100.6 points per game. Then you got the Lakers at 101.1. So that's kind of how you look at that. You can see a team's offense and uh, their defense as well. So moving over, um, dig into pace. So pace is just how many possessions um, a team is getting. So you can tell which teams are up and down the court faster, which ones like to take their time, use more of the shot clock and that sort of thing. We want high pace games. Um, there's gonna be more opportunities for shots, rebounds, assists, pretty much steals blocks just more chance for fantasy points in high pace games so that's kind of what we're targeting here so looking at this i've got pace for the season and then pace for the last five games for each team so you can see atlanta is a fast paced team they're 11th in pace for the season um, second in pace over the last five games um, detroit is 21st for the season 17th um, in the last five games so looking let's say um you know, you're kind of looking for for teams in the top half of the pace facing off against each other. So one that we see right away, we got Miami at Chicago, 12th and 8th. Those teams are 12th and 8th in pace on the season. Um, it is a little bit lower of a total here. Um, pretty good defenses going head-to-head. -head. They're both allowing under 110 points per game, but they do have high pace, so there could be a chance for some fantasy uh, relevance in that game. So then moving over past pace, we've got offensive efficiency. And offensive efficiency last five games. And then we've got the opponent's defensive efficiency and the opponent's defensive efficiency over the last five games. So as you can see, Atlanta offensive efficiency is outside the top 20 rankings overall. But they get a pretty good matchup against Detroit, who is outside the top 20 in defensive efficiency. So it's a pretty good matchup for them there, um, despite them being a little bit lower on the offensive side of things. So then moving over, we've got um, fantasy points. Opponent defense versus position. So this would be Atlanta's playing Detroit. So if you just look at this row all the way across, um, Atlanta's playing Detroit. So everything in purple here is the defense of their opponent, which is Detroit. So if you go to the line below, 
which is Detroit and Atlanta, all of these numbers here are going to be Atlanta's defense. So you're always going to want to look at the row ac across when breaking down matchups. So let's look at Atlanta at Detroit. Um, so Detroit is ranked 24th against the point guard, and this is FanDuel fantasy points. The reason I use FanDuel is just because they break down their positions. Um, there's no multi-position eligibility like DraftKings, so that's why I am using... Um, I, I mean, it's pretty close. If you actually go and look at the numbers, um, the rankings, even the points per game allowed to each position from FanDuel to um, to DraftKings, comparing them, it's very, very close. But I decided to use FanDuel just because of the positions are very concrete. So you got Detroit, who is 24th against point guard versus the season, 13th against shooting guards, 16th against small forwards, 17th against power forwards, and 10th against centers. Now, if you want to see how they've done over the last week, you can look to the column right beside it. Um, with a little bit bigger sample size now that we're getting into the season, I'm going to be switching this over to the last two weeks. So instead of a 3-4 game sample size, which really, you know, it doesn't really give us enough context as to who they played, um, doesn't give us really a big enough sample size to say, okay, um, all of a sudden Detroit is first against uh, small forwards over the last week, but they're 16th versus small forwards on the season. Um, that could only be two or three games. They maybe played some of the weaker small forwards um, in those two or three matchups, some of the weaker small forwards in the league, so we're not getting complete context there. So I'm going to open up that sample size to the last two weeks. So you can look at that. This this is the tab I kind of start with. Um, like, for instance, looking at over-unders, I like Charlotte and Washington. It's the highest over-under on the slate. Houston, the Clippers down here at the bottom. Um, something else that I look at when breaking down matchups, and I'll talk about this a little more when we get into the individual uh, player position tabs, is looking for a matchup against a bad defensive efficiency team and possibly uh, a pace team. So let's just look at that. Offen um, opponent defensive efficiency with a high pace. So obviously right away, um, so we're going to be looking at this column here, opponent defensive efficiency, and we're going to be looking at pace of that team. So the, these two columns here. So right away we've got Washington, who is sixth in pace on the season, but they are 29th in defense, defensive efficiency. Going to want to target some Charlotte players for sure tonight um, because that's just something that correlates really well. Um, we've got Brooklyn here as well. They're fourth in pace on the season. They're 18th in defensive efficiency. Going down the list here. Yeah, that's just a few that stand out. So you got uh, San Antonio, 13th in pace, and they are 28th in defes defensive efficiency. Um, it's a little bit easier to view this information when you're looking at individual players, but this is where I start to kind of kind of make a small, a short list of the teams that I'm going to be targeting, um, possibly the positions I'm going to be targeting against those teams, and then I start digging into the actual individual players. So starting at point guard, um, you're going to see some of these plays here for Friday, November 2nd that are on the sheet already that I've gone through early in the morning, um, some of my early core plays. There's a lot of information on this tab, so I'm just, I'm pretty much going to go through just point guard, and then I'm just going to zip through the other positions because all the information up top here, all the different stat categories are exactly the same throughout all the individual positions. So first of all, you've got player name, team, opponent. You've got that same Vegas line um, to help you break stuff down. you got the line, you got the total, you got the team projected points. You've got FanDuel salary, DraftKings salary, the percentage of the cap, which is huge because obviously the different salary cap um, on the two sites, so I wanted to compare. Maybe um, it's really helped me in choosing, okay, so I like Luca today. Which site is he a better value on? So he's going to cost almost 23% of your salary cap on DraftKings, but he's only going to cost 20% of your salary cap on FanDuel. Makes me like him a little bit more on FanDuel. Um, so that's kind of how I use that percentage of the cap. Sometimes it's very close. Sometimes it's just a great play on both sides. Sometimes there's like 4 or 5% difference, um, maybe some mispricings on some of the sites. This is just a way to go out and seek out that um, mispricing and be able to get that value on whatever whatever site uh, is he's best at, obviously. So then next we've got FanDuel points per game and DK points per game. That's just their season totals. That's just pulled... Um, that, that's not a projection at all. That's just showing what they've done up to this point. Um, eventually, I'm going to have some projections built into the sheet with minutes projections, points projections, that sort of thing. That's something that's going to be a little bit down the line. Um, 
but it, it definitely is coming. So then something that else is very important to me um, when breaking down individual players is the actual, not just points per game, because, you know, obviously different players play different amount of minutes, um, different usage and that sort of stuff. So FanDuel points per minute is something I really like to look at. Um, so FanDuel points per minute, anything above, like, you know, right around that point per minute or, or above is good, and it really makes sense. Uh, it's something I really like to look at for players who are maybe bench players, um, who are stepping in for an injured player, maybe getting a start, going to see some more minutes. Um, say they're like 20 to 22 minute players normally off the bench, and they're averaging, let's just go down and look at one here. Dragic's not a really good example. Like just looking at it, okay, um, it's kind of an outlier because it's only been a one game sample size of him starting, but Sha Shaquille Harrison for Chicago. Um, he was normally a bench player, but he got the start. So as you can see here, it stands out 1.46. Fan, fan duel points per minute. Um, see, you scroll over and you look at his minutes per game, it's only 6.1. It's because he's been coming off the bench, hasn't really played much at all, but he got the start. So that just tells me that, okay, he's now getting the start. So he's going to have that, he's got that fan duel points per minute already. He's going to get an increased role in the offense, more minutes, more usage possibly. Um, so definitely like him. So that's kind of a reason why I highlighted him there. So that's how I look at the, the FanDuel and DraftKings points per minute. Um, another thing I kind of do is look at, you know, projected minutes. So let's just say, um, for instance, let's go with Trey Young. So he's averaging 1.33 FanDuel points per minute. We take that 1.33 and we say, okay, he's averaging 33.7 minutes per game. Let's just give him, you know, a lofty projection of 35 minutes. So he's 1.33 FanDuel points per minute and then we're going to times that by just his 35 minutes projection that let's just say that's the projection that we think he's going to play tonight that gives him 46.6 fan duel points so that's kind of a it's it's a loose projection um there's a lot more that goes into projections like looking at the matchups and stuff but just a loose projection take that fan duel or DraftKings points per minute times it by however many minutes you think that player is going to play tonight kind of gives you a loose projection of that player. So 46.7 for Trey Young. So then if we were to take that and divide it by his price, which is 9,700, just to see what value he's at, that is a 4.8x value for him. So what we're looking for for cash games most nights, um, double ups, 50-50s, we're looking for about 5x. Um, to get into the GPP, um, you're kind of looking at that 6x range. Um, but at Roto Pros, we really concentrate on cash games and building a bankroll. You know, slow and steady wins the race type thing. So we really concentrate on cash games. So that's really what I look at. So just kind of putting that all together, seeing that he's right about 4.8x value um, without even looking at the matchup, kind of a way to get yourself into a projection and kind of like a player. That's why I kind of highlighted Trey Young because I will take a 5x from Trey Young, um, you know, matchup independent. For sure, and then you got looking at the matchup, and you see that Detroit is 24th against point guards on the season. Um, they're not really an up-paced team, but they're bad in defensive efficiency overall, not just against guards. Um, so that kind of gives me okay, I can probably take that points per minute and give it a little bit of an increase tonight, just because of the matchup. He's probably going to get hit hit over five x with my original projection. So that's kind of how I put all that information together. After that. We've got your season stats, we've got games played, how many starts that player has made, what he's averaged minutes per game, uh, points per game, uh, two-point percentage, three-point percentage, overall field goal percentage, um, how many assists per game, steals per game, blocks per game, rebounds per game, all that kind of information that we're looking for from a player. For the most part, for cash games, we're looking for not just scoring um, players that just kind of get their fantasy points through scoring. We... I really like to concentrate on players who not only score, get lots of shots per game, but can pick up some rebounds, blocks, steals, assists, uh, get points in multiple ways. It just, when a player has a bad shooting game, um, it, it just really helps keep his floor high when he's getting those secondary stats. When you get a, just a player that pretty much just relies on his shooting, doesn't really create his own shot, uh, maybe just a... Um, you know, a standalone player sits in the corner, takes those shots. If his shot's not on that night, he's pretty much giving you a terrible fantasy performance. So those aren't players that I really target in cash games. So that's why I'm looking at these assists, steals, blocks, rebounds across the board. As you can see, Luca is absolutely amazing. 
he's averaging 29.9 points, 9.4 assists, and 10.6 rebounds per game. Pretty much a triple-double every game. Um, he's outstanding, and he's got, uh, I'll get over here in a minute, but looking at rebound percentage, so you got rebounds per game. Rebound percentage is just when that player's on the floor, what percentage of his team's rebounds is he getting? It's a great way. This is a brand new stat that I just added this season. Um, it it kind of points you in the direction of which players are getting the most rebounds for their team. So if you really want to, something else I'm going to be doing is putting, instead of just having individual position tabs, I'm going to have team tabs. So I'm going to have a tab for, uh, it might be a separate sheet depending on the size of the Google Sheets, but I'm going to have a separate tab or sheet with each individual team, uh, players listed by position, just so that you can really compare and you can find which players are doing more for their team than others. And I mean, the usage definitely um, gives us an indication of that. That's the next stat on here. So as you can see, Luke is at like 35.5 usage. Anything above 30 is big. Um, looking for, you know, you're normally going to see players in the 25 range, your top players, 25 to 30, the top players on the team. Um, going over a shooting guard, you can see... James Harden's at 40. So that's just absolutely ridiculous when you're looking at usage. But what I'm trying to create uh, with that rebound percentage and some of these stats, and then, like I said, getting into listing each individual team is just to better your research, just to find um, the players maybe that you can ignore those outlier performances from some players and see on a bigger scale, um, larger sample size which players are performing for your fantasy team consistently on on a night-to-night -night basis which is kind of what we're looking for from a cash game perspective so then we've got each individual players so over here on the matchups tab we had offensive um, efficiency and defensive efficient uh, opponent defensive efficiency on the season um, on the team level we're now breaking that down into the individual player um, so this is on a scale 100 is kind of like your average and it's, it's just looking at how many uh, points that player produced per 100 possessions on the court. So anything above 100, 100 and above is good. Anything below 100 is bad when you're looking at the offensive rating. So obviously you see Luca um, at 120.7 is one of the highest in the league. Uh, Trey Burke down here, he's got 127.4, but he's got... Uh, a little bit smaller, only a four game sample size there. So you definitely, that's why I added games played and starts. It's just to see when you see that massive 127.4 offensive rating, wow, that's unreal. I should get Trey Burke in my lineup. Keep in mind, he's only played four games this season, averaging 17 minutes per game. So that's just something to keep in mind. The sample size is very important when looking at when looking at stats as a whole. Um, no one stat is uh, the be all end all uh, of stats to, that are going to point you in a direction to choose a player or choose a team, no matter what the sport is. You're going to have to dig deeper and look at multiple stats, look at sample size, look at opponent efficiencies, that sort of thing. You got to put it all together. To create your plays. It's not just going in and saying, oh, okay, uh, this player averages X amount of points per game. I want him in my lineup. Now, there's so much more that goes into it each and every night. And using this research consistently, um, putting it all together each and every day is going to help you become a better fantasy player, no matter what sport you play in the long run. So that's why I created these sheets, is to put all the information all in one spot to really push your research process to the next level and even save you time. A lot of people I know don't have time. A lot of our customers work full-time jobs during the day, don't have time to go over the stuff like I do, 12 to 16 hours uh, a day, most days, every single day of the year. So um, that's kind of why I put these sheets together to help you guys out. Moving on, um, we've got uh, defense versus position. We've seen this on the team level on the main page, so it's just defense versus point guard for the season. Um, and then the one week, like I said, I'm going to be switching that up to two weeks. So that helps you pick out, uh, like Luca, um, pretty good matchup here against Cleveland, who is 18th versus the point guard on the season, the fantasy points per game allowed. Um, as you can see, Dallas, we're going to move into the offensive efficiency here. Dallas is first in offensive efficiency on the season, thanks to Luca. Um, and then opponent def defensive efficiency, we've got Cleveland, who ranks 19th in defensive efficiency, so pretty good matchup there as well. Um, both teams are... 20, you know, outside looking at the season, they're outside the top 20, 23rd and 24th in pace. So it's a little bit slower pace game here. Another reason why we get a little bit lower of a total. 
um, given that it's a pretty good matchup for Dallas going up against Cleveland. So that's just kind of how I put it all together. And then this is your injury status here. So as players are out, I'm just going to come over here and type out. That changes them to red over here just so that you're not putting them in your lineup. So all of this on the individual player level is a great way to come starting to compare players. Um, like, for instance, let's just say two players that are um, right side by side, just easier to look at. You've got Trey Young and Russell Westbrook. So you got Trey Young, who gets uh, a matchup against Detroit, who's 24th against point guards on the season. Westbrook gets the Clippers, who are 16th. So obviously the matchup checkbox goes to Trey Young there. Um, we've got offensive efficiency. That obviously goes to Houston. Um, so Westbrook gets that. Um, and then we're looking at the opponent's defense. Trey faces Detroit, who's 22nd in, in defensive efficiency. Westbrook faces the Clippers, who are 8th in defensive efficiency. That's another check. Um, in the box for Trey Young, and then you know we break start breaking down the pace here as well. So it's just a matter of how many boxes each player checks to see which one's better for me tonight. Uh, Trey Young is a little bit better matchup than Westbrook, so that's why I've got him highlighted in green as a core play. So that's the way I break down the individual players um, at their positions and come up with my plays, my initial plays. Obviously, in basketball, one thing we need to know is that news is king. Um, so much news comes out within that last hour. Players sitting, players on rest, injured players, new players stepping up into a starting role. That is key. Um, a lot of value comes up in that last 30 to 40 minutes of the, um, before lineup block, and that can change the way your whole lineup construction comes. Um, you know, you go about your lineup construction. So I don't actually build a lineup unless it's to build a dummy lineup just to throw in and reserve some spots on FanDuel or DraftKings. Um, but I don't actually build my lineups until like the last hour, um, maybe two when we start getting a little bit clearer on the news. Each day is obviously different. Some days we're waiting on, you know, a dozen pieces of news. Um, no point building a lineup until you have that key information because it's going to change your whole entire construction. There's obviously the core players like Luca. Um, James Harden, that sort of thing, that you're obviously going to have locks and you can try and build around it. Um, get, you know, develop some questions for yourself like if this guy sits, um, this guy's going to be in my lineup. That's how I'm going to go about it. So just, just a matter of a process throughout the whole entire day. So I start my day, like I said, going over the teams, deciding, you know, making a short list of the teams I want to use, and then I start going individual positions and highlighting three, four players that I am keen in on. Um, and then I've also got a list, and I, I have a feed I started in the uh, Rotopro Slack chat um, called NBA Talk. I list all the injury relevant in injury information in there during the day. Um, I pin it to the channel as well, so please go check that out. That is updated as the news comes in almost instantly. Um, it's not quite instant because you know I do it manually. But And then as we get closer to lock, there's another channel, NBA Starting Lineups. Um, definitely get in there. I use that just to post every team's starting lineup as it comes in. Um, again, just wanting to put all the information in one place to make it easier for you guys. So like I said, I'm going to go through the rest of the positions, but I'm just going to kind of give you, because everything is, everything is exactly the same once you start going through all the other positions. All the stats are the same, all the usages. Um, the only thing that really changes is the defense versus position changes to shooting guard. Um, other than that, everything else is the same. So you can, you can breeze through all these positions. And if you want, you know, to highlight your own, make your own player pools without, you know, having to, you know, do notes or whatever, you can go up to file on the sheet. You can't see it here. I've kind of narrowed this down just so we can just see the relevant information on the sheet. But at the top of the sheet, if you click on file, create a copy, then go ahead and name it whatever you want. Uh, Chris's copy is what I call mine if I'm making myself uh, a separate copy to do some calculations or you know maybe build a GPP player pool that I want uh, for reference. Name it what you want, open it up, it now becomes um, editable. The one that you're looking at right here and the one that you're going to download each and every day is going to be view only, which is fine, um, but if you want to go in and you know start highlighting players, maybe utilize that, uh, make your own player pools just to have for reference. Definitely go make your own cheat sheet, um, then it will be editable and you can start adding your own players in there as well to go along with ours. Something else I'm going to have on the sheet um, with me and Austin moving forward on a daily basis here, just going to go in and bring it up, is consensus ranks. So just going to be a sheet that I'm going to have here, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. Um, 
And like I said here at the bottom, ranks are based on points per dollar value. So I'm not just going off our ranks aren't going to be um, who's going to score the most fantasy points tonight. It's going to be points per dollar, which factors in, obviously, the salary for each player. So it's probably going to be updated. Uh, I don't have a concrete time yet, but it's going to be about an hour to an hour and a half before lock. I'm going to have these starting to populate. They will change, so don't just take a snapshot of it. See who's there for the ranks. Keep your eye on this you know, kind of leading up to lock because as players are ruled out, players step into the starting roles like I talked about with the news, I'm going to be updating uh, the top fives here as well. So, um, And then obviously you're going to see our skeletons which come out. Uh, Austin has those about 30 to 40 minutes before uh, lineup lock. And then we're in chat there answering questions. Um, so that's kind of our process each day. So if you have any questions, maybe something I didn't cover um, in the cheat sheet here, going over any of these positions, any of the stats, anything that maybe you want to add, um, things that you'd like me to add to the sheet, things that would make it a little bit easier for you, let me know. Hit me up in the Rotor Pro Slack chat. DM me. Hit me up in the members chat. doesn't matter. Um, and I will definitely try and add that for you. And we can get on a you know a one-on-one -on -one DM um, if you've got questions about stuff, and I can definitely help you power through the sheet. And uh, you know, get the main goal here is to help you save time. One, two, make your take your research uh, to the next level without adding more time to your research. Thanks a lot. Again, if you're not a member of RotoPros, um, definitely head over to RotoPros.com. We've got free trials on now. We've got. Uh, um, I think it's a three-day trial for a weekly membership, a seven-day trial for both the monthly and yearly membership. So go check that out. Um, you can always cancel after the trial's over, but uh, pretty sure you're going to stick around and you're going to like what uh, we have to offer. Thanks a lot. I'm Chris Durrell for RotorPros.com. See you on the court.